What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're gonna to be testing out lossless scaling on the MSI Claw. In most cases, we can double the frame rate with a game like, let's say, Forza Horizon 5, running like this, 1080p, high settings, over to something like this. So basically, we went from an average of 49 FPS up to an average of around 87 FPS. We've almost doubled that frame rate using a single application. Unfortunately, this application is not free. It's $7 over on Steam, and I did make a video showing this off running on the ROG Ally X. It's something that I've been using quite a bit, but I know there's a lot of people out there that do have the MSI Claw. They were kind of disappointed with the performance. This is something that can definitely help you out. And I'll tell you what, I've been testing this out quite a bit on the MSI Claw with that Intel Core Ultra 155H and the latest updates from MSI. This is working out really well with all of the games that I've tested so far. Okay, so getting right down to it, I want to show you what lossless scaling can do for a game like Cyberpunk 2077. And I do want to say that a few hours before I started recording this, CD Projekt Red actually updated with AMD FSR frame generation. I have yet to test it, but I'm sure it's going to work out pretty decent on this game. Either way, what I like using is Intel's XE Super Sampling or XESS with this game on these Core Ultra chips because I do think it does look better. Where it balanced all low settings and we're at 900p. So we're just going to stroll around for a second. Got the FPS up in the top left hand corner and that's our old FPS because uh, unfortunately when we enable lossless scaling with frame generation, Afterburner there just isn't going to recognize those generated frames so I've named that old FPS. And it's getting close to running at a constant 60 at 900p. Still not quite there but we can actually make this run a lot better with lossless scaling. We can also make it look a bit better also. Like I mentioned, lossless scaling is not a free application. I've actually got it installed here. It's $7 over on Steam. There's two things that this is gonna do. We can upscale our game using different scaler types and we can enable frame generation. Scaling mode, I usually leave this auto full screen, but you can choose a custom if you want to. Auto seems to kind of find exactly what you need there. Scaling type from this drop down, you can use FSR, you can use Nvidia's image scaling, but personally I like the lossless scaler. So this is its own built in scaler. Sharpness, we can enable this if we want to, I'm going to leave it at one. And performance mode, this is going to help it perform better on lower end GPUs. And since we're working with an iGPU, yeah, I do recommend enabling performance. So with just this set, we've got the game running at 900p. Once we enable it, it'll scale it up to 1080p. Now that's really not gonna help performance here. It's just gonna make it look a bit better on your display because we are running at a lower resolution than the display supports. The main thing here is frame generation in my opinion. There's two different modes, LSFG 2.3 and 1.1. I'm gonna go with LSFG 2.3. Again, we've got a performance mode. It will help out on these iGPUs, but you can experiment with any of these settings. I'm gonna go to performance. Our mode here, two times the frame rate, three times or four. With these iGPUs, you're really not gonna get great performance with three times or four times. We're trying to double the frame rate here, or at least get up over that 60 mark. So we're gonna go to X2. We've got a cursor option, and if you hover over any of these, you'll see it'll bring up a nice little description. I'm not gonna mess with the cursor. Rendering, sync mode. Default mode is usually what I use. Again, experimentation is definitely where it's at to see exactly what you like here. You can go to VSync, VSync half, VSync one third, or VSync one four. Default is my preferred option. And next, we have our max frame latency. This is gonna indicate the number of frames that are allowed to be stored ahead. With these iGPUs, I'm at three or four with most games. Some might perform pretty decently at two, but with Cyberpunk here on the 155H, I'm gonna to go to four. Does support HDR, we don't need G-Sync here, but we do wanna draw that FPS. This is gonna give us an accurate frame representation of those generated frames. It's actually gonna show us the before and after. LS1 scaling type, we're gonna to try to do 2x frame generation here. Max frame latency four. We need to hit scale and then choose the application we wanna scale. Obviously, it's gonna be Cyberpunk. Give it a second. It's gonna scale up and now in the top left-hand corner, you can see we've got our old FPS 
and our new generated FPS listed. And again, Afterburner just isn't gonna pick these up, so it's gonna be showing us the old FPS. And when upscaling and using frame generation, it will take a little performance away from the old FPS there, but it more than makes up for it with our generated frames. So before, we were seeing an average of around 58 FPS with Cyberpunk 2077. Now, up in the top left hand corner, you can see we're over 80 FPS. I don't recommend using this for fighting games because there is a bit of latency. And when you're using a keyboard and mouse, it's definitely more noticeable. But with a controller and single player games, this is something that I've been using quite a bit on all of my handhelds. Personally, I'm just a big fan of frame generation and it really does help out, especially on those games that just can't reach that 60 FPS. Another thing we could do here is sync that V-Sync up and just kind of lock it right there at 60 with frame generation, which is pretty nice. It does keep it a little smoother. That GPU and CPU doesn't have to work as hard. So this does work on the MSI Claw and it's definitely not gonna be for everybody. But if you're looking to just get a bit more, you kept your claw, you didn't end up returning it, and you've kind of been disappointed with performance, this application I think is well worth picking up. So I did want to test out a few more games here. We're going to move over there now. One game that's actually been running pretty well on the MSI Claw since MSI updated their BIOS and released the overboost feature is Red Dead Redemption 2. Right now we're at a low medium preset here, 900p. Not too bad, I mean, it's definitely playable like this, but we're gonna be using lossless scaling to upscale this from 900p to 1080. And along with that, we're gonna be using that built-in lossless scaling frame generation to really up the FPS with this one. I'm using the same lossless scaling settings that we did with Cyberpunk 2077. And before, we were seeing an average of around 62 FPS with Red Dead 2 on this device. Now we're up in the 80s with it. And yeah, it's a pretty smooth experience with frame generation here. And I really do think that frame gen is gonna be the future of these handheld gaming PCs to keep the wattage down, battery life up. So we don't have to really hit up that CPU and GPU as hard as we would if we wanted to run this at a native 1080p with no frame gen on. And I think with most of the handhelds coming to the market in 2025, we're gonna see some sort of built-in frame generation like AMD's fluid motion frames, or if Intel's got something in the works for their Arc GPUs, that would be nice also. Now, I usually don't recommend using frame gen with racing games because they're so fast paced, but you know, I've actually tested it out quite a bit with Forza Horizon 5 on a bunch of different handhelds, and it works very well with this game. Now, still, when it comes to multiplayer fighting games online, frame gen will introduce some latency, so it will put you at a disadvantage, but single player games are gonna be awesome with this. Again, we're using the same settings we used for Cyberpunk 2077 and Red Dead 2. And with this game, we're at 900p high settings. So once we enable this, it's gonna scale it up to 1080 using that lossless scaler, introduce that frame generation, and now we're seeing averages in the mid 90s with this. And like I said, I usually don't recommend using this with fast paced games like racing games here, but with Forza Horizon 5, it's worked out really well, even on the ROG Ally and the Ally X. So I wanted to test it with the MSI Claw. And yeah, we're actually seeing some pretty amazing performance here. And the final game I wanted to test here was Elden Ring. This is one that's really struggled for a lot of people on the MSI Claw. Right now we're at 900p and with this one it does that borderless window so it does kind of scale up automatically. But we are at 900p low settings and we're usually seeing an average of around 47 fps with this. Even with MSI's new overboost feature enabled, which you know kind of goes up to around 25 to 30 watts, it does disable a few extras in the BIOS. But with these updates, I have seen a nice little performance increase across the board. Unfortunately, with this one, still didn't allow us to play this at 60 FPS. Even at 720, it's kind of hard pressed to get up there until we enable lossless scaling. And one of the best things about lossless is it'll work with basically any game. It works with DX9, DX10, 11, 12, Vulkan, OpenGL. I've been able to use this with brand new AAA games and even older games like Skyrim. Now with Skyrim, we don't need it on this device, but you know, if you want to get a little extra out of something like Skyrim Special Edition at Ultra Settings, it will help. 
But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. I did have a bunch of people asking about lossless on the MSI Claw. And yeah, as you saw with this video, it does work. It's a $7 application that can be used with discrete GPUs or iGPUs. Personally, I do think that the price is well worth it. And if you've got a higher end system with a dedicated GPU, you can even use their X4 frame generation, which will give you four times your frame rate. Now it's really up to you, but I will leave a link in the description. And if you want to see this running on the ROG Ally X, I'll leave a link to that video down below. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.